Hi, welcome to Susan Stanley Stitch in Time. On this channel, I normally talk about cross stitch, quilting, textiles, and sewing notions from the past. But today is a special edition episode on stamping fabric for piecing. If you've watched me before, you know I've been working on this hand pieced elongated hexagon quilt. And I'm putting this, the fabrics together by hand, stitching them by hand. Well, I'm also trying a newer technique to the quilting community, which is prepping your pieces using stamps. And so you can see that line there, that's my stitching line, that was prepared with a stamp. And then the cut line you can barely see because it's been cut. So that's what I've been doing. Now, let me show you, I have quite a few ready in here. I'm, I'm working in pinks and browns and blues, and I've got these all prepped. So I'm ready to go. They've all been stamped and cut out and they're in my basket. So I can take this with me when I, when I need some stitching that doesn't require a big magnifying glass. So it's really handy. All right. So the first thing you're gonna need, what materials do you need? The first thing you need is a mat, some kind of mat that has resistance to your stamp, some kind of a, a rubberized mat. Now this one is Matilda's own and I like it a lot. It's very, very thin. Um, but I think anything that you use for rubber stamping would probably do the trick. You also need a stamp set, and of course I've shown you and the, the shapes, but the stamps that I'm using are these acrylic stamps. They are from a company called Danny Bells. I don't know if that's gonna focus, but I will link that below. Dannybells.com.au. This is an elongated hexagon shape. These come as rubber pieces like this that you attach to this acrylic block. All right, so here's the main piece and then I have the side pieces that I will be cutting out, prepping to go all around the edge of the quilt. These acrylic templates are reusable and then of course you could interchange any other stamp onto them if you want to do a different project in the future. You're going to need a stamp pad and I use archival ink so that the so that the ink that I leave for the stitching line on the fabric does not eat away the fabric over time. It keeps it safe from rot. There's no acid in this at all. You're going to need an ink pad to clean your stamps and you might want to wet this when you're stamping just so you can wipe your finger in case you get a little bit of the ink on your finger. You'll need a cleaning solution to wash your stamps off afterwards, after you're done. You'll need a good pair of scissors, a good pair of fabric scissors to cut out your stamp piece on the cutting line and these are Dovos, I love them. They're very, very good quality scissor that works really well. Um, if you're going to do some hand stitching, which I am not going to show you today, but you will need a good thread, I like to use this prime piecing thread, 70 weight two ply, it's a glazed cotton. It's by YLI, it's strong and it's fine. And I like that. You will need a nice pair of straw needles, and I love Gina Kimball's needles. I really like, I don't know what about these gold needles. She's got all these different sizes available, but they're just, they have a really good hand. They just feel really good in your hand. Um, and if you're going to be hand piecing, you will need pins. And I like these Karen K. Buckley, very, very fine. They're almost like 
an acupuncture needle. They're very fine, these very fine needles to hold your pieces together for stitching. Okay, so traditionally when someone was going to prepare fabric for hand piecing or, or use templates, the early templates were just paper or metal or cardboard and you would have to place them on the fabric and with a pencil draw around trying to stay as accurate as possible because that is either your cutting line or your stitching line. So you would either have to draw this line and then cut a quarter of an inch away from it if it was your stitching line or you'd have to draw this line and measure a quarter of the way in. And so you'd have to take a ruler after the line was drawn. So let's see if, let's, let's try one. Let's just try one line here. And you can see the fabric moves, it buckles up. There's lots of room for error. See that line? And then I would have to measure a quarter of an inch away and I have to do little dots. And then I'd have to draw a line. And there was a lot of that. And then you'd have to cut it out. And then after about 10 or 20 times of that, this edge becomes distorted and your piece loses its integrity. So people started using plastic and all kinds of other, op other things for the templates. And, and those all work, but it still involves this drawing process. The stamp, it's a one once and done. You stamp it, you cut it out, the cut line, the piecing line is there and you're done. First thing you have to do is pick fabrics. Now for my projects, I love fabrics with lots of interest and lots of movement. Hopefully the fabrics you pick, if you're going for dark shades and light shades, hopefully the back of your fabric is light. A lot of companies do that for this reason. So you can draw easily on them on the back and see what's going on. Now, every once in a while, you'll get a beautiful saturated fabric that is dark all the way through. And so this is brown. I didn't happen to find any in my stack today. If that happens, that archival ink, you would have to get in a white. I picked a sepia tone because it's a good color for all these shades that I'm working with. So you pick your fabric and it doesn't have to be starch pressed or anything. Just, just make sure it's flat. And this fabric's really fun. It's really interesting. It's got the serpentine going on. I can see it from the back. I like to position my fabrics and my stamp on the fabric so that I see all that interesting movement. I like my quilts to have a lot of movement. I like them to have a lot of action. So you're gonna take your stamp. Now the first thing you have to you have to be aware of is you have to decide what the where the grain of your fabric is. And so if you don't have any selvages on your fabric, you can pull your fabric gently on the edge and you can see there's resistance. That's a grain line. You can see on here, it's a grain line. This one has more resistance. So I know that this is where the selvage was. The selvage always gives you more resistance. This angled line is the bias and look at that. Woo! You wanna be careful that your main lines of your template are on these strong grain lines. So I want this and this to be on the strong grain line as much as possible. Now, having said that, sometimes you want a fussy cut. Sometimes you want a specific motif. And that means you're going to have some bias and, and some positioning that causes a lot of your piece to be biasy. It's okay. Hand piecing can accommodate that. It's a little trickier when you're doing machine piecing. Sometimes the motif trumps holding this on a grain line. Okay, so I want if I want this longest side to be on a grain line, I, I would place it like this. Or like this. But see, then some of these are going to be on the bias. So it's just unavoidable. So just know, just be aware of that and know 
as much as possible, try to try to use your green lines. Okay, so I'm gonna take my, my piece now and I'm going to prep it for stamping. And that just means I'm going to rub the piece, rub the stamp over the ink until it's loaded with ink. And I don't wanna keep, I don't wanna smash it. I wanna just gently rub it back and forth. Now I, it's recommended that you store your stamp pad upside down. That causes the ink to come to the surface of the pad and it's ready to use. Now this pad I've had a while and it's, it's doing really well. And I'm gonna do a few little pushes just to get that on there. Sometimes it takes a couple of couple of stamps before it's really ready to go. Now if you are if you stamp this too heavily with too much ink, it will leak through to the front on a lighter fabric. So you want to just get that that perfect balance. If you're nervous, you can take your first stamp onto a piece of paper just to see. And if you see ink oozing out on the line edges around the edges of the line, you know you've loaded it with too much ink. You want those lines to just be as accurate and clean as possible because those are your cutting lines and your stitching lines. So we all know if we've done piecing, the, those, those are important lines. Okay, I've loaded it up now, let's see. I wanna go, I'm gonna have the serpentine off to the side. So let's just lay it on the fabric and then we're not gonna let it shift back and forth, up and down, side to side. We're just gonna put some pressure straight down onto the, onto the pad, onto that block. And let's see if we get a nice clean stamp. Ooh, that's beautiful. That is gonna be really easy to cut out and stitch. That turned out really nice. Okay, so I did my serpentine this way. Now I like action and movement in my quilt, so I'm gonna turn my fabric and let's see if I can get a piece that way. I could I could squeak that in there and I think I don't think the lines would overlap, but just to be safe, I think I'm gonna go over here and look at that, how interesting that's gonna be. The other benefit of these stamps is that they're of course obviously they're clear, they're acrylic, they're see-through. There are stamps available that are wood, but you don't get this benefit of being able to position your, your piece. So let's do one more. Okay, I'm just gonna just let it go down and then I'm gonna start pushing on it to get a really nice, clean line. Let's see if that's gonna. Okay, it's a little lighter, but it's, I can work with it. I can still see that. That's gonna be really easy to work with. All right, so I would just go through my fabrics, and you know, this is the fun part. You know, on something like this, this beautiful fabric, this is the back. I could, I could make that beautiful flower go right in the middle of my piece. Oh, let's prep this. Prep that a little more. That last one was a little bit light. And we'll put that beautiful flower right smack in the middle. We'll press. Oh, nice. That's going to be gorgeous. Okay, now after you've done all of your stamping, you do want to make sure, like I mentioned before, to clean your stamps. You just put some of this stamp cleaner on, on the stamp. It's got this little pad. You just rub it on there really well. And then you rub it back and forth on this tray to get all that residue off so it's ready for your next stamping session. I have not pre-stamped everything for this project. That would be impossible to do. Plus when I buy new fabrics, I wanna add them into the pile, so. All right, so let's go back to this piece here. Now that we've stamped, let's imagine we've spent a bunch of time 
stamping. We're going to cut out the piece. And so this outer line is your cutting line. And this is not absolutely crucial to be incredibly accurate. What is really crucial is your piecing line. So you're going to cut this out and you try to, I try to stick to the middle of the stamped line. And I save scraps if they're bigger than an inch or two. I don't save little tiny pieces. All right. Okay, so now my piece is ready to go into my quilt and be stitched up. When I'm, when I'm stitching, I'm going to bring back my quilt. Let me show you here. I take the pins and I line them up with the stitching line on the top piece and the stitching line on the back piece. And I can see that I need to lift this off and just move it a hair because you can see that is not completely accurate right there. That pin is off. That means your stitching is going to be off. So I'm going to move this, get right there on the center of that line. Pin it in place. And now I'm ready to go. Got my needle here. I'm ready to stitch. Okay. So as you can see, I really like this method. I think it's easy to use. There is no need for excessive line drawing over and over and over again. It's accurate and it maintains its accuracy because there's no distortion to your stamp. If you use the stamp correctly, it's going to have perfect stitching and cutting lines every time from the first stamping till the hundredth. It's a great technique. I am going to list some other sources below of stamp manufacturers that I know of. The only drawback to this method is all the shapes that we like to use have not been made into these clear plastic stamps that you can use on these acrylic boards. That's the only drawback in my book. If you do a project and you use this technique, I would love it if you would uh, tag me at Instagram at Stanley Susan, and I would love you to use the hashtag quilt stamps or hand piecing from stamped textiles if you start a project. So we can all see what you've done and follow along. In the meantime, I'll see you soon and please make time for stitching.